Hi everyone, my name is Ariel. As of the making of this video, I am currently connected with Jose Rizal University as a part-time accounting professor under the College of Business Administration and Accountancy. I will now be presenting to you the financial statements of Audrey San Francisco. Ito yung ating comprehensive exercise na ipinakita ko sa inyo using the Mark Cyrum E-Live okay? na case scenario. Now, in the last episodes kasi, kung maaalala ninyo ito, this one, your 14 columnar work pad, ano, hindi lang siya 10 columnar. Kasi last episode, nung pinag-usapan natin yung closing entries, pinakitaan ko na rin kayo ng post-closing trial balance. So, kaya nadagdagan ito ng apat pa na columns for the closing entries and then for the post-closing trial balance. Now, previously, actually, doon pa lang mismo sa adjusting entries, once we were able to create the adjusted trial balance, na ipakita na natin ito na income statement, and then this balance sheet. However, ang difference nito sa ipapakita ko sa ngayon is that the presentation is formal. Kasi dito, makikita mo yung mga balance. Pero when we are presenting it to management, to the owners of the business, kung kanino ka man reporting if you are the head of the accounting or if you are the head of the finance department, kailangan na maayos ito, organize. Hindi pwede doon lang sa iyong working paper. Kasi ito ay will ito will form part of your working paper, okay? Your the worksheet. Now, let's convert this to proper presentation kasi 'di ba, we have the basic financial statements, your income statement. Kapag nadagdagan ito ng comprehensive income, we call it the statement of comprehensive income. And then, meron tayong statement of changes in equity. You have your balance sheet or the statement of financial position. Meron din tayo ng cash flow statements. Now, dito ko ipapakita sa inyo, i-convert natin itong figures na nasa columnar papunta doon sa presentation. So, let's go first doon sa ating statement of profit or loss or your income statement. So, if we will go back doon sa mga figures, makikita mo doon kasi na yung sales mo ay 12,000. This one. And then, your cost of sales is sure 10,000. That is why, meron tayong tinatawag na gross profit of 2,000. Ang case pala nito is more of merchandising business, ano? Pero huwag kayong mag-alala. Since ang objective kasi dapat ng... Uh, first few chapters is more of a service company. Doon sa mga gagawin kong comprehensive exercise, magfo-focus naman tayo sa service operations. Nagkataon lang kasi dito yung nagamit kong example ay more of merchandising. Kaya meron tayong tinatawag na cost of sales. Pero kapag ikaw ay nasa service business, wala kang mga cost of sales. Kasi ang pinapakita mo, yung imbes na meron kang binibili ng mga prod, ng mga inventaryo para ibenta mo you are performing your services so labor naman ang ginagamit mo in this case sales less cost of sales equals gross profit and then we have yung operating expenses kung maaalala ninyo you have your subscription expense meron ka ng supplies expense and then your depreciation expense O, oh, para sigurado lang tayo, balikan natin yung comprehensive exercise. This was the FS preparation. Ito yung ginawa natin. Kung saan ko pinangkinuha yung mga figures. O, wala naman tayong iba dito na mga types of expenses maliban sa cost of sales, subscription expense, supplies expense, and then your depreciation expense. So, basically, ito yung ating source ng mga information. Now, this is your statement of profit or loss. Makikita mo dito is the title of the company. Si Mark Cyrum e -Lib, And then, the statement of profit or loss. Or your income statement. And then, for what period yun? For the month of May 2020. So, ganito siya nakapresent. 
Now, you will notice that because the expenses is greater than your sales or your income, o 12,000 versus yung 10 plus 2,250, mas malaki yung total expenses mo, you have your net loss of 250. Kaya dito, naka-parenthesis siya. Ibig sabihin, naka-negative. Lugi ka. Pero, pag yan ay positive, ibig sabihin yan, papalitan natin itong net loss, gagawin natin net profit. Or sa iba, ang tawag doon, net income. Now, once you were able to determine the net profit or loss, that amount will then be transferred to the balance sheet. Pero para makita natin yung flow ng transfer of the net loss to the equity section, gawa muna tayo ng tinatawag natin na Statement of Changes in Equity. And this is the format of your Statement of Changes in Equity. Lapit ko lang ano para makita natin. Okay, so there you have it. This is the title of the company. This is the title of the report as of May 2020. Now, you will notice here that there is that San Francisco beginning capital. Ito yung capital balance mo at the beginning of the period. Okay? O 80,000. I'd like you to, ano, no, to, when you go back after this video, balikan ninyo yung working paper para makita ninyo na tama itong mga figures na ito. But then, for now, the San Francisco beginning capital is 80,000. And then, notice that this net loss, okay, pinaliit ko, pinaano ko kasi eh. Ayan, this net loss is transferred to your statement of cha uh, changes in equity, negative. Kaya, yung subtotal mo will be 79,750. Meron kang withdrawal. Okay? That is your 2,700. Binawas natin because this is a contra-equity account. That is why the ending capital balance will now be 77,050 pesos. This is also uh, reflective of your closing entries. Yung ginawa natin na state step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4. Kung maalala ninyo yun, step 1, Close the income accounts to your income summary. Step 2. Close the expenses accounts to your income summary. Whatever will be the difference, transfer it to your capital account. Ito yung step number 3 natin. This one. And then, step 4. Kung meron kang withdrawal accounts, close it to your capital account. Kaya naman dito, meron tayong ibinawa sa iyong capital account. So, that's how we deal with your closing entries and that is how it is reflected in your statement of changes in equity. Now, once we have this one, pwede ka nang makagawa ng isang balance sheet na balance na ang iyong ending capital at yung expanded accounting equation na nakikita mo yung income and expenses is already is already <laughs> is already included here in your San Francisco ending capital. So, pakita ko sa inyo ngayon Eto. Now, pagdating sa balance sheet, meron tayong tinatawag na reporting formats. And dito ninyo ma-encounter yung tinatawag natin na report format and then the account format. Yung una kong ipapakita sa inyo sa ngayon dito is yung report format. Okay? Ang report format kasi, this one, uh, vertical, patayo. Assets, dito. Para kita sa camera, you have your assets followed by your liabilities and then your equity. As you will notice here in the presentation, makikita mo dito yung total current assets followed by your non-current assets. You have your total assets. And then, since wala kang liability, iniskip pa natin yon. ang meron kang amount dito is your San Francisco Capital, which is your corrected na yung ending balance na 77,050. You will also notice yung classification of assets and liabilities. Although in this case, ang makikita mo lang yung current and non-current classification ng ating asset account. 
So, ganun ka-importante yung pinag-usapan natin ng previous episode at makikita ninyo na in na natin ito dito sa ating presentation ng Statement of Financial Position. Yan po ang ating report format. Pero, meron din tayong tinatawag na account format. At yung account format na yan is following yung accounting equation natin. Asset equals liabilities plus equity. Horizontal naman ito. Hindi ko na ito ipapakita sa inyo with the figures, pero makikita mo lang siya na pahiga. Nandito sa pinakakaliwa yung assets, nasa bandang gitna yung liabilities, at nasa kanang bahagi naman yung equity. So that is your account format because it is following your accounting equation na nakapahiga naman kasi. Okay, so that is your balance sheet now. O balikan ko lang ano, eto na yung ating balance sheet account. Statement of Financial Position well, We already have the three financial statements Your basic financial statements And yung pang-apat is your What? The cash flow statement Abang siya nga pala Sir, paano yung statement of comprehensive income Pagdating dito sa income statement Or your statement of profit or loss Since wala naman tayo dito ang statement of comprehensive income o yung ating income statement hanggang doon lang. Hindi na ito na stretch out papunta sa other comprehensive income. So, wala tayong um, comprehensive income. Ano lang, statement of income or your statement of profit or loss. O now, yung pang-apat natin is your cash flow statement. At pagdating naman sa cash flow statements, meron tayong dalawang method of presenting it. Meron tayong tinatawag na direct method and meron din tayong tinatawag na indirect method. But this one, yung ipapakita ko sa inyo, yung makikita ninyo sa screen ay yung direct method. Dito sa direct method, makikita ninyo ang um, kinakategorize natin yung business activities into three types. Yung cash flows, uh, yung operating activities, your investing activities, and your financing activities. And syempre, dahil this is your statement of cash flow, yung movement ng pera mo from the beginning up to the end of the period. So, makikita mo dito, these are your cash flow from operating activities. Collection from customers, purchase of supplies, purchase of inventories, payment of subscription fees. Kaya meron ka nitong net cash provided by operating activities. Follow then by your cash flow from investing activities. Yung pagbili mo ng equipment. Okay? And then, followed naman ng yung cash flow from financing activities. Pag financing activities, eto naman yung mga movement ng cash na may kinalaman sa pagpasok ng pera. Either investment by the owner or merong mga financing from the banks, etc. So, there you have it. Yung investment of the owner and then the withdrawal of the owner. Ang laman yan. So, pag pinag-add mo itong tatlo, yung mga subtotal mo, your negative 22,500, your negative 35,000, and then your positive 77,300, you will arrive at the net increase in cash of 19,800. And, wala pa naman tayo. Nung nag-umpisa kasi tayo, zero balance yung cash mo. So, any difference, syempre, eto na rin yung ending balance in cash. Okay? So, that is your cash flow using the direct method. Now, di ba gumagawa tayo ng statement of income or your income statement or your profit or loss statement? Pwede rin kasi natin gamitin yung dulong banda, yung net income or your net loss para makagawa tayo ng cash flow statement. At dito, pumapasok yung tinatawag natin naman na indirect method. So, dito makikita mo yung ating template. Ano? You have here your net profit or loss. Oh, sorry, hindi ko lang na-correct pero it should be profit or loss. Okay? Na-OC na naman ako. The XXX. That will be whatever is the amount that is lifted from your income statement. And, magkakaroon kasi tayo ng adjustment for... Um, non-cash expenses uh, Meron kasi sa profit Sa income statement mo Na mga expenses Na walang money involved 
Kasi di ba, pag gumagawa tayo ng income statement, we are following the accrual basis of accounting. So, hindi naman kasi tayo nakakash basis. So, dito may mga non-cash expenses. So, kailangan natin i-account yon So, halimbawa, si depreciation. Pag nagde-depreciate ka, de depreciation is your periodic allocation, di ba? Wala nang cash involved doon. So, etong 500, i-add back natin siya doon sa profit. And then, you have your, oh, this is your template, ano? Increase in current asset accounts, negative. Uh, papaano natin yan kinukuha? You have your balance of the current assets account from the previous period. I-compare mo naman siya ngayon doon sa ending balance or the balance of the beginning period. I-minus mo siya. Pag nag-increase siya, oh, this one, makikita mo, naka-negative. Pag decrease naman siya, positive. Okay? So, pag asset, pag mga current assets, under the indirect method, inverse yung relationship. Pag nag-increase yung current asset, ibawas mo. Pag nag-decrease ang current assets, i-add mo. Pag indirect method, ang iyong ginagamit. Pero pagdating naman sa current liability account, o direct yung relationship, pag nag-increase ang iyong current liability, i-add mo. Pag nag-decrease naman ang iyong current liability, i-minus mo. And then, you will arrive at the balance which is the cash flow from operating activities. Now, I want you to be particular with this kasi whatever is the amount will only be your cash flow from operating activities. Hindi nito ibig sabihin na yun na mismo yung balance mo ng cash at the end of the period. Usually, doon nagkakamali. Kahit ako, medyo lito ako pagdating sa preparation ng cash flow. <laughs> oh. Uh, para naman may relate ko yung hirap ninyo ano. O etong 22,500 compare lang natin sa indirect method. Makikita mo dito. This is the one. Okay? And then you have your cash flow from investing activities and then your cash flow from financing activities. So that's how we do your um, financial statement. Okay? So nakabuo na tayo nung apat. Yung disclosures, okay? Uh, when we are preparing for the proper ano na, um, report, proper financial statements na, yung breakdown ng mga amounts, nilalagay natin sa notes to the financial statements. Yun yung disclosure. Okay? So, we are done with the reversing entries. Oh, we are done with the financial statements. Proceed na tayo sa reversing entries. Now, the reversing entry is basically the opposite of your related adjusting entry. Kung makikita mo yung aking cycle, ano, this color blue arrow represents your adjusting entries and then the yellow arrow represents your reversing entries. Pag sinabi kasi natin reversing entries, nire-reverse lang natin mismo kung ano yung adjusting entry na ginawa at the end of the period. So that these reversing entries are being made at the beginning of the period. Pero bakit ba natin siya ginagawa? Ang purpose kasi ng reversing entry is to simplify recording of transactions in the next accounting period. Especially if the transactions involving adjusting entries are recurring in nature. Ibig sabihin, paulit-ulit. And para masimplify, para maiwasan yung pagkakamali sa recording, nag opt yung management na magkaroon na lang mag-conduct ng reversing entries. But this is an option. Hindi ito requirement. Optional siya. It is at the discretion of the management, syempre being led through the finance manager or the accounting manager, kung ano man yung tawag doon sa head of department no? ng accounting finance. So, reversing entries are optional. It is up to the company if they will opt to perform reversals. So, hindi ito mandated ng batas na, o, oh, kailangan ninyo na mag-reverse ng entries. Okay? Kahit sa mga standards natin, accounting standards or your generally accepted accounting principles, sinasabi na this is just an option. Now, ano sa adjusting entries yung kailangan lang ng reversing entries 
or kung saan yung reversing entries ay applicable. So, I, I have it here. Um, the transactions that can be reversed are those deferrals. Pag deferrals, you have your prepaid expenses and your deferred revenue or your unearned revenues. Pero, pansinin mo na ang makikita mo lang dito is your pagdating sa prepaid expenses, only your expense method and pagdating naman sa deferrals, only your revenue method. So, your income statement approach. Hindi natin pwedeng i-apply yung reversing entries pag yung sinelect ng management, pag yung sinelect na method of recording of your prepayments and unearned revenues are your asset method and liability method approach. Okay? So, maliwanag po tayo doon. Pagdating sa deferrals, pwede itong i-reverse provided expense method or revenue method. Now, pagdating naman sa accruals o parehas yun, pwedeng i-reverse. Mapa-accrued expense man yan or accrued revenues. Now, para ma-appreciate ninyo, ma-visualize ninyo yung application ng reversing entries, if you remember, I have the illustration of accrued salaries ni Eddie sa puso mo nung nag-discuss ako ng accrued expenses. Meron akong ginamit doon yung accrued payroll kung saan sa trabaho naman kasi, kinsenes katapusan usually yung sweldo natin pero yung attendance cut-off noon hindi the same nung cut-off nung, nung payout. Okay? Uh, you might want to visit that episode on accrued expenses para ma-revisit ninyo yung illustration. Pero I have it here. O, basahin ko lang din ulit para mas maalala ninyo sa ma-recall. So, si Eddie sa puso mo employs personnel for its online business. Ang payroll daw ng mga tao ay quincenas, 15th, and end, o katapusan of the month. The, account, the attendance cut-off are as follows. 26 to 10th, babayaran ng 15th. Samantalang yung 11th, day 11 hanggang 25 of the month, babayaran ng katapusan. So, tatlo yung empleyado ni Eddie sa puso mo. 537 sila, uh, ang sahod ng kada isa sa isang araw, which is the minimum wage in Metro Manila. At ang trabaho niya, ang pasok nila, ay anim na beses sa isang linggo. Okay. Kung babalikan natin, ito yung calendar natin for the month of May. Tapos, ito yung first cut of payroll na binayaran ng 15. So, yung payout dito. Pagdating naman sa second cut off, ito yung attendance cut off mo. Binayaran naman ito ng 15. Kaya nga, ba? yung accrued salaries computation natin na 8,055 which is 537 times 5 days times 3 employees para yan dito sa sinahod nila sa limang araw from 26 to 30 although covered yung 31 rest day kasi yon wala naman silang sahod doon so, yun nga lang kung paulit-ulit kasi yung transactions so every 15th and every 30th of the month nagpipay out now, assuming na same amount lang naman ito, walang mga overtime, walang mga undertime, mas madali, mas convenient para sa mga nagre-record, sa nagpa-process, yung mga process owners, na kung ano yung amount, yun na rin yung entrada nila. Pero because of the accrual basis of accounting, at the end of the year, or at the end of the period, kailangan kasi natin na i-account kung magkano man yung expense mo for the period, kahit na binayaran siya doon sa susunod na na period. So, in this case, ano, kung maalala din ninyo, ito yung adjusting entry na ginawa natin. Debit to salaries expense, credit sa accrued salaries payable for the 8,055. Now, papaano pag kinumpute siya ng buong cut-off na babayaran mo on the 15th? So, in-extend ko yung month ano, para ipasok dito yung 1 to 15th for the month of June. Kasi itong accrued salaries mo, itong 8,055, babayaran siya sa akinse ng June. Kasama ng sahod from 1 to 10. Okay? Except yung sa rest days. Na pag kinumpute kasi natin yan, you have 537 a day times 14 days. Papaano siya naging 14 days? O, bilangin natin ito. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 5 plus 6, that is 11. O, meron ka pa dito, 8, 9, 10. Ang cut-off mo kasi ng attendance is hanggang 10th of the period. Lang, lahat ng ito, papasahurin, ibibigay, ibabayad ng company sa a 15. Okay? So, that is your computation. 22,554. Pagdating doon sa 15th, Alam na ng process owner, alam na ng payroll na ito yung ilalabas. Pagdating sa accounting, ito yung i-record ire nila. So so that to simplify accounting uh, recording para ito na yung amount na ipapasok nila at the beginning of the period, pwede na nilang i-reverse yung 8055. Dito papasok yung ating reversing entry. On June 1, reverse lang natin ito. This is the exact opposite of your adjusting entry. So, kung nakakredit yung accrued salaries payable mo, so reversing entry, nakadebit naman yan. Ang salaries expense mo, dahil nakadebit yan, i-credit naman natin ito. Para, pagdating ng June 15, nung nag-pay out na, debit to salaries expense, credit to cash, for 22,554. So, that's how we present yung reversing entries and the effect to your um, salaries expense. Kung mapapansin mo ano, yung actual expense mo talaga for the month of June is the difference between 22,554 and 8,055. What happens if hindi natin ito ni reverse? Kung walang reversal, ganito ang magiging journal entry mo sa June 15. Debit mo salaries expense which is for the month uh, for the periods of June 1 hanggang June 10 eto lang siya 14,499 and then dahil sa credit mo sa adjusting entry meron kang 8,055 pag binayaran siya syempre i-debit mo naman ito and credit to cash for 22,554 so you see the difference of doing the reversing entry and not doing the reversing entry. In any case, that is acceptable. So, nasa discretion naman siya ng management. Kung ano yung isi-select niya na uh, policy sa pagpo-proseso ng mga adjusting entries and kung kailangan ba itong i-reverse. So, I hope by now you were able to understand the reversing entries kasama, kaakibat nung pinakita natin na financial statements sa naunang mga slides. So, if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll be happy to assist you. So, I'll see you again on the next episodes. Bye-bye!